Good afternoon. Sweeping. Do you know what that is? It's a broom. I thought I was the only one that knew what that was in here. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to Friday's video. Lovely weather out there again. It is, it's very nice. Yeah. a lot to go on about today mate yes big organization going on in here uh let me just sweep this i mean i'm out of breath here meant to be a bloody finely tuned specimen and i ain't oh dear right let's just have a little look over what we do rover belt still isn't on no 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 That's because we've had other things to do we have and I haven't heard back from the owner yet, Andy. Sent him a little guesstimate the other day. Very close ballpark to what the final figure's gonna be on that. And he's worryingly gone a bit quiet, but. Oh dear. No, he's away working, he'll be in touch. The Cosworth. So this is the four wheel drive one, mate. Yep. Complete. Looks hell of a good, that. Look nice? Yeah, I like that. Got the original Cosworth red there for the rocker cover. Very nice. So we've had that blasted by ADH. Thank you very much, mate. Um, our blasters, obviously we've got a fine glass bead in there. So if it's fairly thick paint, it doesn't touch it, does it? No. It ain't worth us messing about. Well, you, you can do it, but it takes forever. It does. Like yeah. it'll take you most of a day. So we've got him to blast that one and the other cover um, for the other engine, which has gone. So I've got a post in the cover. Anyway, um, yeah, so we will faced over the top of it after painting it red. Put our little um, sticker on there, which looks very trick. Yeah. And this thing is done, mate. So you've, um, you've cleaned out the, uh, the yeah, diff there. Yeah, the diff and... Give it a lick of the old silver. Yeah. Looks very nice now. Couldn't stick that on as it was. No, it was horrible. And he's opted for the, the cover and everything on this one. Got the cover, mate, yeah. Yeah, don't see um, that too often, do we? No, not very often. It's so all, all the pulleys are done on that under there. We've got two, the only thing is we've got two little sort of hex lugs that usually bolt into oh, the yeah. rocker cover, um, but we are missing those. So we're gonna have to try and find some okay. for the front cover to bolt to. But apart from that, we've done everything and I think it looks absolutely wonderful, doesn't it? Does. It does. It looks look like a brand new Cosworth engine. It does. Like straight out the factory, which is, I suppose, well, it pretty is. It's as close to now. that as it could ever be. Yeah, looks really nice. So. Sent in the invoice today, um, and hopefully that'll be gone by next week, mate. Lovely. And in its place, we have got the Honda Civic Type R, or one of them that was all lying about over there. We've got that all off the floor. Yeah. So this was the one that had done an end, scrapped the crank, scrapped the rod. We've managed to get another crank. Um, we are gonna get a noose. Well, I'm gonna have a word with the customer first, but you've measured the rods this morning, haven't you? Yeah, they're a bit... Mm. So the one rod was knackered. Yeah, one rod completely and utterly knackered. Yeah. And then um, the other three were, they, to be fair, probably saveable, but we probably have to take a bit off the caps. And yeah, it's, by the time you sized them and then balanced them and that, you're getting on towards a, it's under 500 quid, I think, for a brand new set of yeah. rods. So ain't worth messing about, mate. No. Um, the block, we've blasted the block. Yes. Measured the but the bores are meant to have how much running clearance? I think two thou, it okay. seems. And what so, we got? Well we got on one of them we got five. No good. Which is not ideal. And on the other three we're sort of uh probably about four, four and a half. Yeah. So these these type R's obviously they're this is a which one is this? Which engine is this? Uh K twenty A. K28, so this is in like a, an early 2000 Civic. Yep, EP3. EP3, I, I like them. Yeah, I like them. Um, but most of them have done a few miles now, add a right old pound in. They yeah. rev to I Evan, didn't they? So it's an alley block, so the bores are gonna be distorted. And yeah. Although it would, it was, they're all right, they're probably all right, but when they come apart, if we're gonna do it, it's gonna have to be done properly in it. So yeah. we're gonna probably be um, pricing up some aftermarket pistons. Uh, the head has been, gone through and faced um, but we've got to get some stem seals put the springs on etc all the rocker gears is the and the cam and that we've got to clean all this up 
Yep. Check the pump out. Make sure that's not knackered. Or I maybe expect it is. Feels a bit crap, so it's yeah. going to have a new pump. Well, I, you should have seen what was all in the sun. Oh, was, really? It was like chunks of metal. It weren't just little <sighs> glittery bits. It was yeah. Nasty business. Yeah, not worth using that pump then. No. So, yeah, we've got to build the short motor on this and go through the head and that. Um, and we've got another Civic Type R in here. Yeah. Um, on the floor. Oh, the, this is what we showed this on the last video. Yeah, we did. We? Yeah. Yeah, we've got to pretty much, I think, clean up, block up, face it. Check it out. Deglaze over. it, see what the bores are like, obviously. Yeah. But the customer's going to be building that, so that's up to him. Most of the motors that are out there on the stands, they're going to all be going in a minute. Um, latest on the Land Rover. Oh, yeah. Bit of good news for the customer, actually. Oh, that's all right then. So he's managed to get hold of a, um, a company up country that said they would take the, take the vehicle in, take the engine in the state it is, um, they will do the motor, warrant it, put it back in, all the rest of it for about 10 grand. And okay. to be honest, I said to him, look, first of all, beware, because we've heard of these companies before, haven't we, that do this sort yeah, of thing, do strip that. it all down and then give you a ridiculous quote. Yeah. Um, by then you're in it, you've, your engine's all in bits and all over the shop. And, yep. Um, but he said that they've got really good Google reviews, um, trust pilot, they're really good trust pilot reviews, whatever. So, yeah. Um, but he has been in touch with them and they said the reason they can do it for that is because they've got a supplier in Germany, which I would imagine is probably um, that do the original bits yeah. for the engine and they've managed to, they can get all the bits. Oh, so that's good. That's good news. Um, the head we've cleaned up and that's going to be serviceable. Yeah. So I've sent over the customer a list and he's going to be pricing up a crankshaft, a new com rod. Um, at the moment, we're assuming we only need one, but we definitely need one, don't we, with that? Yeah. Um, pistons, I'm not sure whether they do oversized pistons. If they do, I recommend we sort of do something with that. Yeah, the balls don't look amazing, really. Not really. Not, not for well. the age of it. it no, but I'm not even sure what dark. the bores are. I'm assuming they're cast iron at the minute. But yeah. anyway, same with the bearings and that, you know, to get new bearings, new timing kit, full gasket set. If you can get all that and it's all sensible, I'm going to give him a quote for doing the bottom end and the head and see what he wants to do, really. But yeah. it looks like we may, we may still have the job. Um, but I said, if they're a reputable company and they can do that and it works out, obviously, dear, the way we're doing it, then I don't mind at all if he takes it away. Yeah. So, that's that. Uh, two pallets out here, which has pleased John. <laughs> Figaro. How many? Two pallets of four each. Lovely. So we're now getting eight Figaro's at a time. That's fine. That's fine. Um, so, now we've sort of caught up with the motors a bit there. We're still waiting for the bits on the, uh, the Perkins. Oh yeah. Oh God. The beginning of next week, I'm going to be firing on with this lot. Yeah. At least one pallet. Want to yeah, get yeah. done for next week. So. I reckon we should do. Yeah, definitely crack on. Just we've get put a off. A, done. We've put off a few jobs, a few engines coming in until at least three or four weeks yeah. to give us time to catch up with what we've. We've obviously got the Ingenium. We've got to build the bottom end. Yep. Um, so I've got to just quickly finish putting the liners in that. It's been one of them weeks, mate, where I just ain't quite got anything finished that I wanted to, really. Well, Except for the Cosy. Yeah, you did get I'm your Cosy done. So... It's yes. one of those, isn't it? What's on the floor behind you? <laughs> Moving on to something a bit more important. <laughs> these are the wheels off the E30, or that are going on the E30. So these are the front wheels that we showed you a few videos ago. Brand new from Apex. Yep in America. Um, the good thing about the Apex wheels is one, they're very light, and two, they may come to order. They do them in whatever offset you want, whatever width, whatever diameter. Brilliant. Um, and they, these are a, a replica of the CSL, CSL rims. Yeah. Um, so on the front, we are running what most people run on the M3s, because obviously we've got the Evo 2 Sport front arches, so we're going to be Nice, it's going to be nice, nice and roomy under there. Nice and roomy. We're going to be lowered anyway. So these are a, a 17 by 8 wide. Yeah. And a 21 offset, I believe. Something like that. 
Yeah, it's quite an aggressive offset, isn't it? That? Yeah, yeah. So the, what I would like it, I'd like it to when we've got it the stance we want that it's the tyres a bit under the just tucked in, just tucked in, mate. Just tucked in that arch there, looking a bit trick. So I've took these over to Nick at Kirkham's Tyres down the road. Yeah, very knowledgeable guy, and he has sort of measured it all up and we've come up with this so this is a a toyo r triple eight which we run on the kit car hell of a good tire a lot of people use these don't they, they do yeah they're a good road tire hell of a good track tire in the dry and ain't too bad in the wet are they no and they're not they don't break the bank either really do they not really i think are. these these are these ones here are 140 quid each it's not too bad not bad really you pay that for like a normal like a Michelin road tire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so he's gone for uh, what we got on the two one fives, isn't it? Two one five forty five seventeen, and that has give us exactly the look we want, really, because obviously the 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 triple eights are a bit more of a bulge on the edge of yeah. the tire, but we wanted it just a bit proud of the rim. We certainly didn't want them looking stretched. And we don't want something that's too like wide bubble. on the yeah. front. Do you know what I mean? So you've got a nice big bubbly sidewall. So that that's going to protect the rear. Yeah. It's going to look lovely in it. And hopefully where the tire goes in at the top, we'll have that just under the old arch. Yeah. So what Nick has worked out is if we can get away with a nine and a half inch on the back, once we've tried this on there, um, with a two four five tire, would it be a two four five forty? Probably. Yeah, because you're it's it changes with the width of the tire so yeah you probably have to go 40 to make yeah. to make the sidewall the same height so he's worked it out that it'll look almost identical to what this looks like on the yeah. wheel with a 245 um and then it would say it'd be an inch and a half wider than this because it's a pretty wide tire that isn't it it it's is, nine and a half, it is I'd actually say, on the back yeah 17. look trick and obviously with the if we can get a nine and a half on, it's going to have a bit more of a dish than this as well. Yeah. Like a fair old dish. So lovely jubbly. They do look nice, mate. So getting there, mate, one step at a time. Still waiting for the carbon C pillar kit. Should be here within the next couple of weeks. And that's all Ryan's waiting for to get the thing on and in primer. Get that fly off my lunch. <laughs> I thought you were going to lob that then. Lob the lunch, mate. Um, so this is, I've had to order another one of these. It's just little things like this all the time with this car. Obviously up there is all the bits for underneath. We've got to get the bushes and stuff in there and wheel bearings on and that. So this here, permabond. Oh yeah. Two part. This is what we bonded the rear quarters on. Okay. And the C pillar kit's going to be bonded on with. It's all glued on. All glued on these days. But then a lot of stuff's glued yeah. together, isn't it? Well, it is, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's structurally because you've got most of the original quarter panels and that on. You've only got an over fender that's bonded to the quarter panel, so the structure's still there. And the same with the C pillar kit. All the C pillar kit yeah. does is hold the rear window, well, and it's a plastic one anyway. I was watching um, Matt Armstrong a while ago on his channel, and he had a, a BMW M5, and I think the the strut tower on the front was damaged, and he had to replace it. And he took the seam sealer off, and all that there was underneath was a little bit of tack welding. So Seriously? Tack welded. So it's bonded mostly? Yeah, mainly bonded for a strut That's tower. Not. That's nuts, isn't it? That's crazy. Yeah, some of this bond now, like that, Ryan said you will not get it off with no. ever. Um, so yeah, as I say, the C pillar kit's going to be carbon fibre anyway, so once it's bonded to the car, it's hell of a strong. Yeah. It's holding a plastic rear window, which will be, again, bonded in. So yeah, be glued together car. But no, I'm looking forward to it now, mate. Yeah. It's gonna be trick. It is. Not looking forward to the wiring bill. No. Probably about five thousand pounds there. Wow. Well. What, are you, gonna, what are you gonna do without the wiring? Well, not a lot. <laughs> exactly. Sitting it in here. Literally, that's all you could do. So gotta be done, isn't it? Yeah. So How's your cold? Coldy. I don't know why I've got a cold. It's block left random. bank. Yeah, block left bank. Puffy eyes. Yeah. Sore Look throat a bit in the morning. Ain't COVID, mate. Ain't COVID, mate. I hope not. I'm sure of it. Ain't COVID. No? Because I feel fine. I just sound stupid. 
<laughs> I got a block nose. Bad. <laughs> Uh, mate, right, moving on, to, let's just move on to a bit more of a serious subject here. Okay. Going back a couple of videos ago, uh, where I mentioned the, it was Sunday, uh, was it Sunday or Monday's video? Monday's Monday, video, think, yeah, Bank Monday, Holiday Monday. So when, when we had the 200 block that was here, with the long stud in, yeah. um, read through the comments afterwards, surprisingly, there was quite a lot of comments saying that I was I should take that one on the chin really because we didn't clean it properly. Well, and I don't know about that really. Yeah, I I can I don't want to fall out of any viewers here. No. But I am going to have to just basically state what the terms are with machining and what have you. Yeah. Well, definitely our terms. Um, the problem you've got is we we don't just do them machining of long six long studs on a cosy. We do a lot of machining. Yeah. We skim heads, and every bit of machining in there, anything you machine metal, you're going to end up with swarf debris and all the rest of it. Um, now to clean most of these engine parts after machining takes longer than than doing the job. Oh yeah, massively. So we you know you've got to bear in mind this has been an ongoing thing for years and years. Um, say for cylinder heads for example you skim a head it's an aluminium head um, we would blow it out as good you, as good as you can clean it out as good as you can within reason yeah um, we were getting customers turn it upside down to put it on the engine a bit of aluminium swirl falls out they're on the phone um, so whether we clean it 90% correct or we don't clean it at all the cu this customer's got to be liable for cleaning it well, otherwise the we and are opening up a whole new can of worms for ourselves and you don't know what they do with it from here back to their workshop or once it's in their workshop you don't know where they put it you don't know what they do with it you no. don't know if they do any more drilling or exactly so you can't say that once it's left here it's 100 percent clean and ready to go on no i the mean you've got to bear in you've got to bear in mind that we get a lot of people, farmers, for example, mm. we'll go through a cylinder head. It's about a 270 pound plus the VAT job. Yeah. So the thing is cleaned and what have you. They'll come and pick it up in their Hilux with a load of hay. Yeah. And God knows what in the back. I'll just chuck it in there. Slung I mean, it in face down. It, yeah. So if, we're, if we are liable for the cleaning from the second it leaves here to when it's actually on the vehicle, then we're just not going to be able to do it. No. And that's why we don't do it. And no. that is why these days the fitter is liable for everything. They're liable for the parts, the cleanliness. Um, it's on our invoice, on the bottom of every one of our invoice in the disclaimer is the fitter is liable for the cleanliness. Well, yeah, look, it's just, you can't really. So it's not. If a, you're not putting it together, how do you, you just don't know you no. can't be certain that it's going to be clean anyway so no this is the thing it's down to the person building it they've got to check it and they've got to thoroughly go through and make sure everything's clean they have yeah it's that simple, the problem really. you've got with cast iron filings after machining it they go to very small filings yeah and what has happened there because the customer said oh it was washed through thoroughly well what happens is to to drill and tap those threads for the long studs they have to be clean for me to run the final process of the, the last tap down. So I'll run a starter tap down, obviously after cleaning the hole. Then the hole's clean thoroughly and around that area. Then we send the finishing drill, uh, finishing tap Bottom down. Tap, yeah. And then I take it out, clean it out again, and then you always get about another quarter to half a turn of the tap down the bottom. Right, so I'll see blown the hole out and done it again you get a little bit more yeah so then we take it out we blow it and then usually we try studying or i look down there and make sure with a torch and make sure that the, we've got a thread and it all looks good so that hole is clean when it leaves here now if you wash it and some of the cast iron that hasn't been blown out before you wash it because really you should blow it out as good as you can when it's dry yeah. that cast iron is going to go in wherever it can i.e the hole yeah and with the water you're going to get a rusty sort of compound and it's going to go like it goes like concrete well yeah so i suspect that's what probably happened um, because when it was here and you had 10 mil of cast iron down the bottom 
even with the drill, you couldn't drill it with by hand with the drill. It was no. so solid. So that's what happens. So if it's been washed from elsewhere, gone in the hole, it's up to you to make sure all the holes are clean. Well, you know but I mean? it's ju that's just it. Like if we're building something, it's our responsibility to, to check it's all clean. It is. The same as if someone else is building something, even if we've done some machining on it, it's their responsibility to check it's clean before they fit it. Yeah. It's that simple, really. So I do, I, I do agree. I, I agree slightly that we should make some sort of effort to get it reasonably clean. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Before it goes to the customer, but we do. We make yeah. sure the majority of the, we, when I, I'll get the block, it's upside down, blow it all out. But I said to the customer, um, look, to clean one of those Cosworth blocks from, from a bare block that's all been machined, I spend about three or so hours on it. Just on the block? Just on the block. Yeah. And I said, well, if you don't mind a 270 pound bill or whatever it is, you know, for me cleaning pretty, yeah. it, as well as, the, and that's basically twice as much as I charge for doing the machining, then fair enough, I'll clean it but I ain't liable for no. making sure it's clean if someone else is building it. Sorry guys, don't agree with that. No, um, but we always either. do give them a general blowout. But if you read the invoice on the bottom, it does say there, black and white. Yeah. You've got to make sure everything's clean before you fit it. 100%. So there we go. On that negative note, we'll end there, shall we mate? Yeah. Hope you all have a nice weekend. Hope the weather's all right. Hope your cold ends up better, mate. And it ain't COVID. I don't I'm test just, tonight and send me a yeah, text. Yeah, I will. Thank but you. I'm just going to push through, I think. Push through it. Push through it. Till Monday. Have a good weekend. Cheers, guys. <laughs>